Hi, my name is Jayram Panchello. I'm a research software engineer at Genentech working on interactive data visualization tools and applications for genomic data sets. Before I talk about what Kana is, let me provide some background into single cell data analysis. If you've now worked with single cell data before, it is a highly iterative and exploratory process. Analysts often choose a number of parameters at each step of the analysis, starting from QC, filtering out low expressed cells, normalization, choosing a clustering method, generating low dimensionality embeddings, finding markers, and any other custom analysis that they want to perform. The choice of parameter at any step of this analysis has a downstream effect on the underlying analysis. And one of the goals of a single cell data analysis is to generate clusters and use known markers to identify the cell types. This entire process is highly iterative and exploratory because the choice of parameters affects how many clusters you find and hence uh, identifying the cell types. When analysts usually perform this analysis, they are working in two different environments, computational environments like R and Bioconductor for processing data, analyzing data, and exploratory environments like web applications for visualizing the results of the analysis. This is also an iterative process where the analyst goes back and forth between these two um, environments, where when you're exploring the results, you're forming hypotheses, and then you go back to a computational environment to statistically verify your hypothesis or reanalyze the data set. Now the idea here is can we merge these two environments that are often seen together, um, that are often separately seen together. Browsers these days are a complex piece of software. They're not just document viewers as they used to be. Several new technologies like WebAssembly allows us to run high performance computations in the browser. And one of the promises of WebAssembly is it can run or provide near native speed for web applications. Others like WebGL, the new and upcoming WebGPU and web workers we can now parallelize and visualize high dimensionality data directly in the browser. So then the question is, can we leverage the browser to be both a computational and an exploratory environment for single cell data analysis? And yes, with Kana is one of our efforts in this direction. It runs single cell RNA-seq analysis directly in the browser. The data you load into the app is never transferred anywhere. There are no backends, no complex deployments, and the app itself is hosted through GitHub pages as a static website. In addition to single cell RNA-seq data, we recently just added support for multimodal data analysis. So if we detect that the loaded data set contains RNA-seq, transcriptomics, and ADT uh, tags, for example, site-seq data, we automatically perform multimodal analysis. Let me walk you through some of the features of the app. First and foremost, data is, is the important piece in the application. We support three most commonly used data formats that are used for storing single cell data, matrix market format, the 10xv3 H5 format, and H5VDs that are usually, that usually contain the and data representations. You can upload multiple files in any of these formats to support batch analysis. For example, if you upload only a single file, you can choose which annotations contain information about a sample or a batch. If you load multiple data sets, then each data set is considered as a batch, or when you upload a date, when you load a data set and we detect ADP tags from the 10X format, we automatically perform multimodal analysis. The application is also is written so that it is extensible to custom file formats and any new readers that come up in the future. I'm not going to the details of the analysis itself, but Kana supports and allows users to customize various steps of the single cell analysis. We efficiently perform computations in the browser by using many browser technologies mostly 
web workers to parallelize various steps of the analysis and WebAssembly where most of the analysis code is written in an underlying C++ library which was then compiled to WebAssembly. We can run, we can currently run an analysis on a single cell dataset that contains around 190,000 cells in around five minutes and using less than three, around three weeks of memory. A lot of the code that contains the C++ library methods and the WebAssembly bindings are available on GitHub. Um, that's the libscrime and the scrime.js libraries. When the analysis completes, we progressively visualize, we progressively render visualizations to provide feedback to the analyst. For example, quality control. During the QC check, check step, we visualize many of the diagnostic plots um, across cells. When the PCH step is complete, we show a bar plot with each PC and the variance explained. When the clustering step is complete, we show the number of clusters that were identified by the algorithm and the number of cells that are to fall into the cluster. Each of these steps are also aware of multiple batches or multi modalities. One of the large but important steps in the analysis is generating low dimensionality embeddings. And in our we currently support PSD and new map embeddings. On these plots, you can overlay and color cells by various cell annotations or gene expression profiles. You can also adjust the gradient if the expression of a gene is skewed by a few low or highly expressed cells. These embeddings can be stored for visual comparison and analysis across markers, clusters, and annotations, and any facets that you generate. Are explored. Since the embeddings are computed in the browser itself, we can also interactively visualize the embeddings at each step. This is a fun way of exploring how the TSME or the new map algorithms work. The visualizations that we use in Kana use WebGL and more importantly use off-screen canvas that allows us to delegate rendering to a worker thread to provide a fluid user experience when interacting with these embeddings. Market detection is one of the key steps in the analysis. Users can explore top markers by modality, if there are multiple modalities, or by clusters that are found during the, at the clustering step. You can also filter the markers using various metrics that we compute during the analysis steps. And we also provide an overview of a gene expression we also provide an overview of the distribution of expression across cells for a particular gene or a marker within this cluster versus all the other cells. Not only markers are generated for analysis derived clusters, but they can also be computed for custom user selections. Analysts can use the lasso tool and make a custom selection of cells. And once the selection is saved, Kana automatically performs market detection within this selection. Kana supports iterative analysis. It uses a DAG internally to define the order and dependencies between each analysis step. The results of each analysis step are also cached so that we're now recomputing the same step multiple times. If an analyst would like to change any of the parameters and reanalyze the data set, we first identify what analysis steps need to be computed based on the changes and we use the store results in the cache as much as possible, hence efficiently performing computations. If the analyst wants to store an analysis state, we provide options to either store it to the browser directly. Um, in this case, it uses the browser's default IndexedDB database to store the, the results, or can also be stored as a file, um, which would be a .kana file, that can then be shared with colleagues or collaborators, or if you wanna come back and continue your analysis from where you left, you can reload the file back and exactly stay where, and you're exactly in the place where you left off. All visualizations in Kana are linked to each other. Any selection on the embeddings propagates to all the other plots. 
um, and this provides a quick overview of your current selection that you make in one of the facets um, to all the other facets that you save. The titles of each of the visualization panels in the gallery also reflect and adapt to these changes. So when a facet is saved, one of the key things that we do is when a facet is saved, we also capture the state that was used to, to restore um, that facet. And many more features, including exporting plots as images that can be used in publications. You can check the logs on what ha what's happening in the background. And the logs also provide you information of what the runtime of each of the step in the analysis is. We ran Kana on a few data sets to identify how it performs when it compares to native analysis. Our results indicate analysis in the browser is comparable to native analysis, both in terms of time and memory. One caveat is WebAssembly currently has a hard limit of four gigabytes. Hence, we can only support analysis that does not exceed this memory limit. A future version of WebAssembly might contain or is going to include 64-bit pointers and once that's in place, we can then support much larger data sets. A lot of the, if you're interested on the engineering side or our data structure side of how we efficiently use data structures to represent sparse matrices or do any of the steps of the analysis, it is all documented in our bioarchive paper and I have a link on that in the slide. With Kana, we can also support hybrid compute. Because of our entire underlying pipeline is written in C++, we can reuse the same code across languages and frameworks. We can, with Kana, you, you run the analysis purely in the browser, but we also have a Node API where you can run the same, exactly the same analysis in a backend environment. Since the underlying library itself is C++, we also have a package cran.chan, which is an R package that binds to the C++ libraries and allows you to perform the same analysis in R. The hybrid compute model comes from the fact that if you have large data sets that are more than four gigs of memory, you can delegate the analysis to a backend system, let the backend system compute, run the various steps of the analysis, and send the results back to the application. Or if the data is small enough, you can do the full analysis in the browser. Finally, bring your own data set, perform your analysis, single cell analysis, and let us know if you have any feedback or comments. It was a lot of fun learning about various new technologies and trying to understand how to build a high performance and pure client-side compute applications that have no backend dependencies. Um, our entire application is hosted on GitHub pages and the code and all the underlying libraries that support the entire ecosystem are also open source. Our preprint is available on BioArchive. Um, please let us know and thank you.